This is the Arctic P14 Max. Arctic's overpowered, do whatever you want fan, but in 140mm. And compared to the P12 Max, Arctic did learn a lot from their mistakes. For example, the bearing. Instead of a dual ball bearing, which was just later replaced by a fluid dynamic one, the P14 comes with a fluid dynamic bearing from the start, which is great. It just saves everybody the hassle of having an army of people complaining about bearing noise, which in turn forces Arctic to do a silent update and replace the bearing, which they should have done in the first place. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a great efficiency here. Other than that, the P14 Max is exactly how I expected it to be. It comes in the usual Arctic style packaging, including four screws, and it is a freaking monster. This thing spins up to 2800 RPM while it's pushing up to 109.4 CFM and up to 3.93 millimeters of H2O. And that thing can be loud. And just for a comparison, the P14 ARGB, which would be like the closest thing built and design wise, that one looks like an underpowered puppy next to this one. In fact, the only fan that I got that could overpower this thing in terms of numbers is the Nokia NFA14 Industrial, which spins slightly faster and pushes a lot more in every regard, but we will see about that in the benchmarks. A small interesting side note, for the very first time, Arctic did not disclose the noise. No idea what is up here, usually Arctic does it in Sonne, which is like really hard to translate into DB, but usually they do something, they even did for the P12 Max, but nothing for the P14 Max, interesting. As I just said, the P14 Max is basically a black non-ARGB carbon copy of the P14 ARGB but on steroids. We got the same five wing design, fairly similar to the regular P14. We got the same additional ring going around, which helps the fan to never stretch out its blades and touch like the outer border, which is an issue if you got to like crazy speeds as we did here. Additionally, in my experience, that ring also might or might not help you with performance, depending on what you're measuring. Having a ring like that has the side effect that the air is coming out in the back in, uh, in like a more concentrated way or uh, in a way directed whereas not having that ring would usually mean that it's like broader the area where the air would be going is broader and with that ring it becomes slightly smaller and in some cases let's say front intake this might even help because the air will be shooting like very straight towards the cooler instead of being like scattered all around the case and then we got the fan thickness. Yes, Arctic is advertising this to be a 27 mm thick fan, which is absolutely true. It's more like 27.4 to be exact, but yes, this fan is thicker than the usual form factor. And people have been excited about this. I have read quite a lot of comments pointing this out as an important feature. The thing is, all of Arctic's 140mm fans are 27mm thick. The P14 ARGB is, and so is the regular P14. So it's not like this is something new, it is still a po performance, potentially performance enhancing thing, but it's nothing new. Other than that, we got the same amount of rubber around the corners as we already had on the P14 ARGB, so nothing new here. But we got a 400mm long PVM cable to get the fan going, and unfortunately there is no PVM PST system. It's, it's just a plug, or any other type of... Uh, PVM daisy chaining without Arctic's buzzwords, it's just a plug. Which is kind of a bummer because the fan pulls like 0.35 amps at max and let's be honest you could run two or maybe even three in a chain at with like even the cheapest AliExpress motherboard and it would still work. So that's kind of a bummer. And now with all of that said, let's finally get to those benchmarks. We test all of our fans for two different use cases. Once on a 60mm thick 10 FPI radiator, or 140 radiator in this case, for radiator performance, where we measure the temperature of the water above ambient to see how much heat the fan is capable of getting out of the system on a given fan speed. And for a case fan, for that use case, we have a custom-built wooden box that acts like a little hot box with a passive Nokia P1 in the middle where the in and out fan are operating pretty much just restrictionless and they are recycling the air within the box. And as they would in a regular case. And we measure the effect of this by looking at the temperature of what the P1 can keep the CPU at. 
And then for both scenarios, we just let the fan spin slow and slow and 10% steps and take note of the created noise at one meter to create later on a noise to performance graph. But as this is the very first time that we have a 140 millimeter fan on the table using those two new benchmarking stations, I just wanted to clarify a few things really quick. For radiator, it obviously doesn't make any sense to compare 140s to 120s. It's a different radiator, different thickness and more different stuff. So it's not comparable at all. For cases, on the other hand, I believe this is very comparable. It's the same box, it's the exact same setup. The only difference is that the holes uh, for the fans on 140mm are bigger. And I do compare 120s and 140s here, and I do believe that it is important to do so, because that's exactly what you would do in a regular case. Most of the time you can choose between 120s and 140s, and in some cases you can even do that in the back. And yes, of course, it is going to be slightly unfair and in favor of 140mm or the 140mm form factor to some extent, but that's also precisely what would happen if you build a new PC inside the most random case that you can buy right now. So for that reason, I do believe that it is important to compare different form factors for this very specific use case. That said, size is not everything and smaller size generally also means more static pressure, which even in a case fan scenario has some level of positive effect. So it is definitely not like a 140 millimeter fan will always win. It's much more complicated than that. And with that, let's just get to the benchmarks. Recycling the air at a max speed using two P14 maxes inside our case simulator allowed the CPU to be cooled down to 41.9 degrees C above ambient. This positions it 0.4 degrees behind the Be Quiet Silent Wing Pro 4 in 140 and 0.9 behind the Nokia NFA14 Industrial, which are the two other ultra high speed 140mm fans that I have available right now. Another noteworthy comparison will be the Arctic P14 ARGB, which is sitting 1.6 degrees behind the Maxis. Interesting what ultra high speed can give you. And as a last important comparison, we got the P12 Max. That one was sitting just a margin of error behind the P14 Max. And that's really interesting because it's basically the same design, but it's smaller, yet it's, it's spinning 500 RPM faster. And if you throw all of these differences into the same bucket, they are both performing kind of the same within a margin of error as a case fan. But nonetheless, it's a 2800 RPM 140mm fan. Of course, it's a monster. Over on the noise to performance graph for 140mm case fans, the P14 Max delivered a very good result. Compared to the P12 Max, it delivered a slightly better noise to performance ratio all the way through. And compared to a Nokia NFA12X25, which of course is significantly weaker at, at max speed, but it does kind of count as like the golden standard for case fans and I like to compare stuff to it. Either way, once both are equalized by either performance or noise, the P14 Max is slightly better. Something that did throw me slightly off guard here, the P14 Max and P14 ARGB did not perform exactly like an extension of each other. At 90 or 100% speed, the ARGB version was slightly louder or weaker, depending on the way you want to measure. But this could be due to my P14 being like three years old and I, that thing had to go a lot through in the years. So it's poor little guy. Anyway, another big surprise to me was the Be Quiet Silent Wing Pro 4 140, which was kind of an amazing case fan, which was just interesting. But for the P14 Max, in general, very, very good. Not the best we have tested so far, but definitely in, in the top 10%. For radiator benchmarks, I unfortunately only had time to test five different 140mm fans. These benchmarks take like half a day to complete each, and from there I want to do multiple runs. But the graph will slowly be filled with more and more 140mm fans as these 140mm fan reviews keep coming. At full throttle, the P14 Max managed to cool down the water of the loop by 7.8 degrees C, placing it 0.7 behind the 200 RPM faster Noxia Industrial fan, but with a surprising 1.2 degree head start from the Silent Wing 4 Pro. Seems the rumors about the Silent Wings 4 Pro 140 being like significantly worse if static pressure is required were kind of true after all. 
But before we look at the noise to performance charts for radiators, I just want to mention I did the 140mm fans on radiators on a different spot than I usually do, which is why the noise law is slightly different, just so that there is no confusion here. But goddamn, where before the Silentwing 4 Pro was the king, now the P14 Max took over above 70%, and for almost everything below, it was ahead to some degree. And another shocking comparison was the NF-A14 and A14 Industrial. Sure, the A14 Industrial can do incredible things, but if you normalize the P14 Max and A14, at no matter the decibel or whatever type of performance you want to measure, the P14 Max won by a lot. So performance-wise, it is a very, very good case fan. So was the P14 ARGB, but this is basically the, the P14 ARGB without ARGB and with a lot more headroom. So it's still a very good case fan. And as a radiator fan, it's among the very best I have tested so far. Granted, we have like 500 charts, but uh, those are some of the best fans that are out there, so it's not bad. That being said, is the fan for you? Yes. If, if you set a very, very, very relaxed fan curve, there is no point in getting a bunch of these and allow the motherboard to casually ramp up by 10, 20, 30% just because you thought about opening Google Chrome. So if you are looking for a very good case fan or one of the best radiator fans, sure, they are going to do a great job, but please make sure to set a appropriate fan curve. You can look at this as if it was a black P14 ARGB. Still an amazing fan, but you have a lot more headroom and you need to control it. Like very much control it. But the thing about them is, this is still Arctic. And these are going for below 10 bucks a fan right here and now, which is just an absolute joke. For the price of one Noxia Industrial or one Silent Wing Pro 4, I can get three P14 Maxes which is just a joke. And this should be all about Arctic's latest and most dangerous fan yet, and at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a bigger cage, because the one that I bought for the P12 Max is just too small for the new one, and, and I, I'm kind of afraid. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at the video where we casually installed two P12 Maxes on the Freezer 36. Not because it was necessary, but because we like to do dangerous things, just that after that one my insurance got cancelled, which is another topic. But for today, hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.